Okay guys, so today we're gonna to do something a little bit different we've never done before. I hope you like it. It's a do-it-yourself upgrade to the Kingpin. I was at my son's house uh, boondocking a couple weeks ago and I noticed that my Kingpin, since we were boondocking on the beach back in uh, a month or so ago, got a little bit of rust and corrosion on it. So I taped it all up and greased it and um, also um, painted it and um, actually uh, wire brushed it and sanded it all down and cleaned it up really pretty. So anyway, when I was doing that, I noticed that the bolt heads, they all have a pattern on them. So if you look at the bolt heads on these, like this bolt head, you can see this one, that shows that head means that's a grade five bolt. Um, this is a grade eight bolt. So you can see there's not any difference in the bolts themselves. I got the same size bolts and the same size nuts, but I was just a little concerned being in the military, spending my time in aircraft maintenance and stuff. I knew the difference between the bolts. And when I noticed that it concerned me, this is a 21,000 pound Kingpin. My hitch, uh, the Anderson ultimate hitch is a 24,000 pound and my coach max gross weight is 20,000 pounds so it's got five bolts on each side of the kingpin attaching to the front part of the the coach so i thought it would be a, a wise choice to go ahead and upgrade i already had the paint and i already started painting when i realized it so today what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove these bolts all these bolts put all new bolts and nuts on here and uh, then torque them down and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that, okay? And as you can see in this picture, I went ahead and removed one of the bolts and there's a total of five on each side, two in the back and three in the front. I used it as a guide, went to, <clears throat> uh ace hardware downtown and they had the bolts they're like 349 a bolt and the uh actual nuts were a buck 49 so i can reuse the washers they're not a problem the lock washers and washers on the inside are not a problem so that's what i'm going to do and the best way to do this so you don't have to worry about uh resetting your kingpin or disconnecting it what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove one more here and then one here on both sides and then replace those, tighten them up, and then remove the other ones. That way you don't have to do it. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. And for my tool of choice today, I'm gonna be using a Snap-on 15 16 by one. The nuts are 15 16 and I've got an impact socket, deep well socket with a Dewalt 20 Max impact wrench. So it's a DCF887. You can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, I've had it for a while. I do have the bigger 20 volt battery on it specifically for this kind of a stuff. And, and my blower, I also have a blower that I use and it works out real well with that. So these are all the tools that you're gonna need, um, <clears throat> just a wrench and a socket. Then after we get done, we'll torque them all down with the same socket and a torque wrench. So we'll go ahead and remove one more of the back one. Gonna go ahead and remove one of the back ones, it's 15, 16. And one more in the front ones. Here, pull that cord down so I can get up in there. And like I said, we're gonna be reusing the original washers and lock washers. So we'll go ahead and put that on. With one of the new nuts. Lock 
washer goes on the back side of the nut. Flat washer goes in the front side. And then put the other one in. Yeah, it's pretty hot today. It's 87 degrees. Probably should have picked a better day to do this, but we want to roll out of here on Friday, and today is Wednesday, so I want to get everything done that I can. Go ahead and tighten these up. And then we can remove the other two. Reusing the original washer and lock washers. One side down, next side to go. And that's pretty much it for that part of it. All we have to do now, you can see I've got five new ones on this side and five new ones on the other side. Uh, I've got them hand tight, so now we're just gonna torque them. Okay, so I wanted to tell you, um, this is a Lippert system. It's made by Lippert Components Incorporated. And so when I looked it up online, the installation instructions and uh, maintenance and upkeep instructions, it gave me a couple of tidbits to remember uh, 95, 110 foot pounds on the side plate. So all these are 95 to 110 foot pounds. Um, you need to have the proper torque wrench to do that, which I do, I'll show you in just a moment. But I also wanted to go through some of the checklist items that they got. So according to their installation instructions, they recommend about every six months and 1,500 to 2,000 miles, you do the uh, retorquing. You also want to check the skid plates the bottom skid plate for cracks and bends, any of the hitch rating stickers, make sure they're not worn off. Uh, none of the welds are broken, any of these welds around anywhere, you wanna check those. Uh, bolt holes on side plates, make sure they're not cracked anywhere or damaged. The air valve on the top of it, need to make sure it's not broken, not leaking. And the airbag as well, the airbag needs to be checked for leaks with soapy water about once every six months and 1,500 to 2,000 miles. Uh, and that's what I would recommend also. The shock and pivot mounting bolts is 95 to 110 foot pounds also, and that needs to be checked 
as well about once every six months or 1500 to 2000 miles okay so this is my sears craftsman um, half inch torque wrench that i've been using forever works great it's fantastic i use it to torque down uh, my wheels on my truck before we leave and on the coach before we leave and this is what i do you always want to make sure you turn it back to stop and if it's back to stop you're going to turn it back up to calls for it to be 95 to 110 so i'm going to go up to 95 foot pounds for the first tightening one ahead i think it's probably over 95 with that impact wrench that that impact wrench does a great job i'll have to hold this one because it didn't go all the way up Okay. You don't think 95 foot pounds is a lot. Try it. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to go up to 110. I usually start at the lowest point first just to make sure I got it up there. You can go in two or three stages, but. I'm just gonna go straight up. Since it's getting hot out here anyway. And the good thing about it is these grade eight bolts can take it. And we'll do them on the other side the same way. Let's drop it down to 95 first. I'm gonna start at 95. So we're gonna go ahead and do them on this side. Like I said, we're gonna go up to 95. Got the torque current set at 95. We'll do 95 and then we'll go to 110. up to 110. Start with easy. That's it, make sure you double check them uh, every six months. Uh, make sure you turn your torque wrench back to zero. Make sure you check all your welds for cracks. Make sure you check your front skid plate and lube it as well. I just lubed mine before I left, so you only have to lube it about every six months. I try to do it about every three or four stops. 
So, like I told you, I was going to paint this, but um, further uh, consideration, I decided not to paint it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my wife's fingernail polish and I'm going to put a line on it so it looks like you can tell whether it's moved. And that's it and I've already done it on the other side uh, again thank you for watching and if you got any questions or anything I've done so far on this do-it-yourself project and if you like this do-it-yourself project make sure you give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching ring the bell if you want to keep on up with us adios and check all your cracks for welds and or all your welds for cracks <laughs>